Well, the West Australian election, it wasn't that long ago. It was a devastating defeat for the government, the Liberal government, in unison with the Nationals. I don't think any Liberals or Nationals would argue or quibble about that. The Nationals lost their leader, Brendan Grills, in his seat of Pilbara. Uh, there were issues in the mix that were not just state issues, it has to be said. The concern, the ongoing concern around the GST has been one of the problems. The McGowan government hasn't exactly started without problems. It swore in its ministry and then immediately had to make a change off the back of that. But coming from the low vote base as well as parliamentary representation base that the Liberals are at, with no agreement as of yet, at least, between the Nats and the Liberals, it is a tough ask for their newly elected leader, Mike Nahan. He's the former treasurer in the Barnett government. As I say now, the leader of the Liberal Party in Western Australia. He joins me live from Perth. Thanks very much for your company. Thanks, Peter. I want to get... Good to be here. Can I just say, uh, everyone here in WA wishes and are praying for our Queensland brethren in that big storm. That's, that's a hell of a storm there. Yeah, it looks pretty enormous uh, and, and long enduring by the sounds of what Tom Saunders was telling us with the slow pace that it was moving. I'm sure they'll appreciate that. Let me ask you about what's happened uh, locally, if I can. I, now, I know that you've written uh, to Bill Short, and I want to get your thoughts on, on that. Uh, I want to know what's in uh, that letter. But before getting to that, you were treasurer in the Barnett government, uh, and... The GST was you know, an unresolved issue uh, by the end of, of the Barnett administration. Have you felt let down uh, by your federal colleagues a little on this? Despite what has occurred, do you feel like they could have done more? Well, it's, it was a real challenge because it was a combination of declining iron ore prices and GST simultaneously plummeted to 30 per cent. It's been my world for three and a half years. Uh, the Abbott government in particular started well. Uh, they did give us $500,000. They considered a whole range of changes. And they were the first federal government in a long time to admit that there was a problem. You can't solve issue if you don't admit to this problem. And they had looked at it in numerous ways and gave us $500 million, excuse me. And then they followed up with another $500 million. They essentially put a floor of 37% on the GST. Uh, during my watch, uh, it never went above that. Uh, so that was, that was successful. The real issue was to convincing the powers that be, liberal, labor, and across the board, that change needs to be done. And the essential problem, as you've talked about many times in your articles, is that for everybody advantaged in the WA, every one person, nine people over in the eastern states in the north of, Western, north of Australia is disadvantaged. So the politics is strongly against mm. any change. Well, on that, and that does take us to, to your letter to Bill Shorten, it really does need to be, does it not, a bipartisan effort to fix this. Otherwise, the risk is it becomes a highly partisan fight, in particular eastern states, uh, if one side of politics tries to take up the cudgels of this and the other does not. What are you hoping for from Bill Shorten? And what are you expecting from your opposite, the now Premier Mark McGowan? Well, you're, you're exactly right. Without... We want long-term change to the fundamentals of fiscal equalization that underpin our fiscal federal system. So it has to be long-term. Yes, you're right. Uh, a treasurer can make a, a dictate every year and tell the Grants Commission how to run. But he can alter it every year. So if, unless we have a long-term solution, it won't be uh, settled. So what we need in, in first in Western Australia, a bipartisan agreement that wrote that uh, – the Grants Commission allocation needs to be fixed, and we need to agree on a, a pathway. Uh, we have that now. Uh, in opposition, Labor were sitting on the fence. Now in government, they've come on board to basically the reform path that we enunciated, and I support them for that. Is it good enough, though, can I ask, that it will take, I think the Prime Minister said this, is it good enough to wait until WA's GST share gets up to near wherever that floor should be? Well, let before me go back. making the change. Let me go and finish the first question. That is, now we need uh, a team and uh, agreement in Canberra. Uh, liberals are on side and have been for a number of years. The real laggard here has been the Labor Party, specifically Shorten. The last federal election, he made it clear, and Bowen did, the shadow spokes, Treasury spokesman, that they did not support any change to the GST allocation. Without Labor support, uh, you're not going to get changed. Either uh, the Liberals will put in change and lose federally, or uh, the, uh, that Liberals won't make change and uh, will lose locally. 
you need bipartisan support of the liberal and labor uh, leader, government and opposition in Canberra to affect any change. I might add, uh, Turnbull could put in a change that would materially advantage WA. Uh, and if they were to lose the next election, which the polls indicate, uh, Shorten would come in there and just rip it out. There would be no benefits whatsoever. So you need uh, support in Canberra on both sides. And McGowan's task is not to lobby so much Turnbull. He's already on side. He needs to go to Shorten and convince the Labor Party federally to make change. That's why I wrote to him. If, if McGowan won't do it, well, I take up the crudge and maybe McGowan can follow us on that also. Well, Mark McGowan being there as a newly elected Premier with a fair bit of clout given yeah. how well he did in the election, Labor federally under Bill Shorten is certainly hoping to pick up seats in the West. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't you be hopeful that you could actually not just talk about this being, being bipartisan as an approach from the West to Canberra, but really doing it? in a bipartisan way, because there seems like there's a bit of a unique opportunity at the start of an electoral cycle where, frankly, you're four years off the next election. Why not both try to just win for the state on this one? Uh, that's what I said. My first pronouncement as elected uh, leader uh, was exactly that. I'm arm in arm with Mark McGowan and the Labor government on this issue. Uh, we will lobby whoever in Canberra. I ask him to do the same thing, particularly mm. with Shorten. You've got to be disappointed, though, at how slow it's been uh, on your own side of politics at the federal level. I, I appreciate what you're saying, Mike Nahan. I get that they're now on board for change, but it's, it's nigh politically impossible if they don't also uh, get the Labor Party on board. But you must nonetheless uh, be disappointed, given the clout of WA inside the Liberal government of Malcolm Turnbull. I mean, we're talking about the finance minister, a former state treasurer, now a cabinet minister. We're talking about Michaelia Cash, the second most senior woman, and indeed the most senior woman being uh, Julie Bishop, the deputy Liberal leader. How can that lot not have achieved more than one-off allocations like what you've mentioned? The political, you, Peter, you're a political expert. Go back to the calculus. Yes, we have a great deal of representation at the highest level in the Liberal government. Uh, but they also have to win the next election. And as I say, it's one against nine. That is one Western Australia, nine Eastern states will get harmed. What we need is a national, it has to be a national reform. We need bipartisan support on this. Yes, it's a slow process. I personally have, before politics, were involved in three major inquiries in the GST. Uh, it's been a long time coming. It has had fundamental flaws for a long period of time. They're just accentuated in WA because it wasn't made to cope with the boom that we have now. But the only way we would solve it, and there are many ways to skin a cat on this, the floor is an okay solution. It's the one we agreed to, so I'm mm. on side. But you need to have shorten the Labor Party com committed to reform. Otherwise, it simply will not, cannot happen. If I go, if Turnbull does take action unilaterally, he might win seats here or sustain seats in WA, but he will lose them interstate and lose government. If, uh, uh, so we need Shorten to play. If not, we're just talking in the wind. All right, just last question, if I can, Mike Nahan, before we let you go. Uh, you, you may have seen the story that I had in the Australian yesterday, uh, confirmed to me by Colin Barnett, uh, that the first he knew of the ultimate deal uh, that was struck by the state executive and the organisation over a period of time with One Nation, and that was putting them ahead in those regional seats in the upper house of the National Party, was when he read about it in the Sunday newspaper, the Joe Spagnolo story. I think you said something similar on ABC Radio a week uh, earlier, uh, Jeff Hutchinson's program. Uh, does that surprise you, that, well, that, the, that the leader, uh, that the, the Premier was unaware until that time? Do you believe that that was the case? Presumably you do, if you were in the same boat. Well, all I can say is that we at the State Council of the Liberal Party met. We committed to having an independent review of the whole process. Clearly, given the magnitude of the loss, we did many things wrong, many things, and they probably magnified each other. So we are uh, committed to having an independent review by a person outside Western Australia to undertake it. And I'm just going to rest, keep my comments until that is finished and, and get on with... Uh, Will it be made public? Government. Uh, I can't answer that. You're going to have to talk to the Liberal Party. But I'm sure, uh, given the porous natures of the debate on this, most of the issues will be brought to your and other media's attention. Well, let's hope so. All right, Mike Mahan, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks, Thanks. very much for your company. Cheers.
and I've talked about the GST a multitude of times. If there is anyone in Canberra watching on both sides of the partisan divide, as Mike Nahan says, it is time that WA gets a better deal than where it sits at the moment. There is little doubt about that. To some other news now.